With our WPF pivot grid, large amounts of data can be summarized and represented in a cross-tabular format that can be sorted, grouped, and filtered. It also supports drill down, printing and exporting to various formats, and data visualization using our charts. In this video, I'll show you how to get started using our pivot grid. We'll add it to a project and go over some settings. I'll start by adding the pivot grid from the toolbox and dragging it onto the application window. Then right click and reset the layout. This sets the pivot grid to fill the entire area. Now let's bind it to some data. Click the smart tag and open the item source wizard. I'm going to select the ADO.NET dataset and create a new connection. I'll change the data source type to Microsoft SQL Server database file. Then open the northwind.mdf database found in our installation's demo data. Go ahead and expand the salesperson view. Select the following columns, country, product name, category name, order date, quantity, extended price, and salesperson. Click finish and rebuild the solution. Open the wizard again and select the created data source. Then select simple binding to bind the control to a plain collection of data objects. Once finished, you'll see that the binding path was added to the pivot grid's XAML markup. Let's retrieve fields. Click the smart tag and select retrieve fields. Fields for all data source columns are automatically created. Let's take a look at this at runtime. The pivot grid displays all fields at the top with the filter area. To populate the pivot grid with data, I'll drag the category name field to the row area, country to the column area, and extended price to the data area. And we have a basic report that shows the total number of orders by country and category of products. The pivot grid calculates data summaries instantly. To create a new report, just add new fields to the required areas. Let's add the product name to the row area, salesperson to the column area, and the quantity field to the data area. And you get a more detailed report about the number of orders. You can sort field values in ascending or descending order by clicking the field header. The row area has two fields, category name and product name. These headers represent products that are grouped by category. You can collapse these groups to only see the total values for the categories or expand them when you need details. You can also change the data fields order using drag and drop. You can sort field values for a specific row or column. To do this, right click the header of this column or row and select the fields whose value should be sorted. To reset sorting, click this header again and select remove all sorting. To filter field values, click the filter button in the corresponding field header. Select some items and click OK to display them. To cancel filtering, check the show all items and click OK. You can also build your own filter criteria using the pivot grid pre-filter. Right click and open the pre-filter dialog. Select a field, a condition, and then enter a value. Let's show only products with the name starting with C. The pre-filter panel appears after you've applied a pre-filter. You can use this panel to temporarily disable the criteria or edit it using the Edit Filter button. To clear the pre-filter, use the Clear Pre-Filter button. Let's see how the grouping works. There's no need to display whole dates in the Order Date field. So click the Order Date field Smart tag and change the field's caption to year. Set the group interval property to date year. Create one more field and bind it to the order date data source column. Change the field's caption to month 
and set the group interval to date month. Run the project and create a simple report. You can see that the year and month fields values are combined into year and month group intervals. You can change the summary function used to calculate the underlying data. Let's make a quantity field calculate the average function instead of the sum. Select the quantity field and set the summary type property to average. Then allow displaying the summary function name in the caption. Now you'll see that data cells here show average size orders. Let's go back to Visual Studio and combine fields into a new group. Select the pivot grid and click the ellipsis button of the group's property to bring up the collection editor. Create two groups here and set the group's name that's used as the group's ID. Close the editor and add fields to the created groups. Select the category name field and use the group property to create a group connection to the category product group. Then add the product name field. Set a group index that specifies the field order in the group. Add fields to the date group. Select the year field and set the group property to date. Add the same step for the month field and set the month's group index. You can also create a predefined layout for the pivot grid. To do this, place the category name field to the row area, the year field to the column area, and the extended price to the data area. You'll see that the grouped fields are connected. Let's run the application again. Look at the field groups we just created. The first field in the group displays the expand collapse button. When a field is collapsed, its detail values are not displayed. When a group of fields are dragged, it's moved as one field. Group fields are filtered in a single pop-up with an intuitive tree-like interface. The pivot grid allows you to limit the number of field values according to the sort order with the top in values feature. Select the product name field and set the top value count property to 5. Enable the top value show others property to display the remaining values. Let's run the app and take a look. These values are combined into a single item called others. You can see here that the top five field values are displayed. To see the bottom five, just change the sort order. The pivot grid has a field list that allows you to show or hide fields from the report. To bring up the field list, use the header area context menu. Place a field from any area to the field list to hide it. Or drag the field from the field list and drop it to the required area to add a field to the pivot grid. Let's go back to Visual Studio and take a look at one last property. The pivot grid provides an advanced field list used to reorder or hide fields, sort and filter data, and so on. To display the advanced one, set the field list style property to Excel 2007. Let's run the app to see the changes. It allows you to show and hide fields. You have full control over its layout. To hide a field, just drag and drop it onto the hidden field section. You can move fields between area sections of the field list, change the sort order, or filter data. And that's it for this video. If you'd like to learn more about our WPF controls, you can watch more videos from our playlist or check out the documentation on our website. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for all of our latest content. Thanks for watching and thank you for choosing DevExpress.